Texas. They say everything's bigger here, and they're right. We've got big cars. I mean really big cars. Have you seen our trucks? They take up a parking space and a half. They're gigantic. And we like them that way. It's got a Texas-sized podcast as well. And this is it. Right here. Fort Hood's great big podcast. Yeehaw. The opening, yes, this okay. Is how the show begins, <laughs> we are opening the show. <laughs> this is how the show begins, Brianna. I wasn't sure if that was the close here. Last not. week, we closed the show with NFL p- predictions. We did, it, oh, much to the me. chagrin of one person on our <laughs> Facebook yeah. page. <laughs> so, here are the results. Okay, the results are in. Actually, mm-hmm. it was week one of the NFL, blah blah blah. We picked mm-hmm. 15 out of the 16 games. It's one of the games we're already over, so we each picked 15 games. Fort Hood's Sentinel Living editor, Jacob Caldwell. Who is not here to defend himself right now. No, oh, well, he led the pack. He was 11 and 4. And we didn't want him around anyway. All right. <laughs> Brianna's little fill in there, Sergeant Melissa Lassard. Mm-hmm. 9 and 6. Yep. Ooh. Yours truly. Mm-hmm. 9 and 6. Yeah. Oh, got a tie. Bringing up the rear. Uh-huh. <laughs> As usual. Charlie me. Oh, man. Seven and eight. <laughs> Taking it for the team. Didn't even get him half right. Taking it for the team. 50% of the time, he's right 50% mm-hmm. of the time. Yeah, you got to do the... Uh, 43.67% oh, of the time. Where's the, yeah, where's the, the sound button, effect? Yeah. Come on, yeah. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Charlie bringing up the rear. Yellow. Yellow is cheering. Yellow is cheering. Awesome. Yellow so there you go, cheering. Charles. How do you feel about... About where you're, sta- you're standing. Well, the funny thing is, I ask me what I said. I don't even remember <laughs> who I voted for, except I know the Jaguars. You actually got that one right. Did I? Yeah. I expected <laughs> I that one did. to be wrong. No, 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 I, think uh, I think I voted went for the Vikings. <laughs> yeah, they lost. Uh, well, which is par for the course, so I expected that as well. Um, and then the Oilers. So. And how? What? What you was your predictions Texans? based Whatever. on the Titans? The, could the, the are they or- the Titans or the Texans? The Texas Titans? No, the, the Oilers no. are now the Tennessee Titans. Are they? Yeah, they have been for like years. Oh, <laughs> well, shows you how much we keep up. With. I've been I've paying actually, attention. Be, I would have been in the same boat. <laughs> well, so if you got seven right but eight wrong, then you're not fifty percent right. You're like less than that. No, <sighs> give me a score of minus one. He was close. We Minus were tied until Monday I'm Night Football. Pretty Ugh. close. You for got them both wrong. No idea what I was talking about. <laughs> Did you just do the eeny miny mo system? No, nah, which everyone basis. sounded pretty, pretty much. I went with the pretty sounding. So. Thing. <laughs> he took the, he took the Vikings because he lived there. You know. Okay, it makes sense. But I took the Packers because they live. I lived there, so mm-hmm. yeah. so there was some bias going on. I took the Jaguars because I like the show The Good Place, and one of the people on that show liked the Jaguars. They actually won that game. You were right on that one. And it was a good show. So yeah. <laughs> thank the you. Inner working. Thank you, The Good Place. <laughs> it's a but. good show. Oh, nice. A good show. We have a very exciting show. This time, speaking of good shows, we've actually accomplished something. Okay. We have someone important. That was me. Oh, okay. I saw you make that face. That My phone vibrated. Okay. And Brianna made a face. <laughs> I thought it was the, uh We have someone important on the show. Yes, we do. More important than the voice of Mario. Sorry, dude. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, more important than... He's been than dethroned. Candace Cameron, 
Brulee. Oh, I don't know about that. Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. Brulee. 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 DJ. More important <laughs> than DJ. It is. Command. Oh, God bless it. I forgot how to say his name. Uh, Sergeant Ber- Burgoyne. Command Sergeant Major. Command Sergeant Major. Major. Cliff. Cliff. Burgoyne. 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 <laughs> That's who we have. Command yeah. Sergeant Major Cliff Burgoyne. Mm. On Command the show. Sergeant Major of Three Corps. Three Corps. And Fort Hood. And Fort Hood. Mm. Mm-hmm. I knew Big all week. that before the show. Yeah. <laughs> the. Uh, no, I know that. I, I have a funny story to tell mm. of his the other day. So I was the the commanding general of three corps was coming back from Iraq. Okay. All right. And so I was out there to stream the ceremony for Facebook. You might have seen it on Facebook. That was me streaming it. If you stayed, stayed around to the end, you could see my finger in the shot. <laughs> yes, you could. Um, we won't tell them which one. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm out there. And uh, some little specialist that's lower enlisted comes running up, and and the sergeant, the command sergeant major, is is there on the railing overlooking the uh, the runway, waiting for the plane. And he says, "You know, so sergeant major, you have to you have to get back because you can't be out here, sergeant major." And sergeant major turns around, "Who said that? Who said I can't be out here? That makes no sense." Well, so sergeant major, you just I'm <laughs> just delivering the message. And, and, you know, the guy's very flustered, runs away. And so that sergeant major, in a, in a very sergeant majory way, stomps to the area that he's been told to go to. Right. You know, and he calls the, the specialist over here. Hey, hey, you, in great army fashion. Hey, you, come on over here. And, oh, oh gee, you know, he comes over <laughs> there. Oh, I want sergeant major. And he's like, I just want to apologize because I shouldn't have treated you like that. Wow. And I really wow. like, what? What am I seeing here? And yeah, he apologized to him, uh, said that, you know, he was just frustrated. He shouldn't have taken it out on him. And then he did one of the greatest things I've ever seen. What's that? In the Army. He let the specialist smoke him. Whoa. <laughs> he <laughs> dropped and did push ups nice. for the specialist. Nice. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. He is a special kind. A sergeant major who yeah. has a real great way of connecting with with soldiers. Afterwards, by the way, they both did push ups, and uh, he gave him some push up tips. And it wasn't the old school ones that you and I did, Dave. right? It's the new ones. The new ones, the new you, fangle. You, you drop. drop down to your chest, yeah. mm-hmm. then you stick your arms straight out, mm-hmm. then you got to bring them back in to the sides, to but the not, sides, not the but front. Your your thumbs have to be as so they were talking about the delicate position your thumbs must be in and then push up again. And that is one. Okay. So you're like resting on the ground with your chest resting Mm -hmm. airplane mode back in push up. That's weird. It's weird. But who are we to judge progress? Okay. I don't know if that's progress. Well, that it's the army. They tell you to do weird push ups. You do the weird push ups. Oh, I'm not doing them. Do you ever do Cobras? No. Do you ever do Cobra push-ups? Cobra? Might have been just like, something the drill sergeant invented. No, I've, I've heard of them. Earlier in basic, but mm-hmm. you push up. Oh, diamonds. No, it's no, you push up, you slide to the right while you're pushing and go to the left, back and forth. Oh, wait, no, I did not no, uh, do that. They're killer. They're oh, killer. I bet. Just it's bad killer. on your arms. Well, it's basic. They're no, just that's trying strong. to mess with you. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Speaking of messing with you in basic? Yeah. What? Well, they've been saying this for years, though. About what they're I doing don't... in Brag? What? They're read their the shark attack of basic mm-hmm. training that we do here oh, at yeah. Fort Hood. Uh-huh. Remember, we had the drill sergeants on here, yeah, and they uh, attacked a local reporter, yeah, on the the podcast. It was so beautiful, oh, wasn't it? I watched that on repeat like <laughs> seven times. I'm not even kidding. Like, yeah. I, I was like, that's so that was beautiful. When uh, the local channel had yeah. us on, had us on the news. Um, they're doing away with that. No more shark attacks. They're doing oh. team building and camaraderie instead. Because they said that the shark attacks and that whole drill sergeant in your face, rah, 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 you know, that uh, that wasn't beneficial. It was It's a uh, relic of an older time, and we need to move forward. As am I. Mm. So <laughs> that that is going away, or they're going to try to. They know. have been saying that four years, though, I will say. That's an article that's kind of like re-come up. 
Yeah, but from... they're actually instituting it now. It's oh, okay. like happening at Fort Bragg. Because I know they've been about though, it, right? and I've heard yeah. about the stuff with the little the cards and all this this kinder, gentler. So softer army. <laughs> softer army? No, yeah, not softer. softer. A different army. A kindler, a gentler. <laughs> a kindlier. An, gentlier. A, an army that gives you a smile and a little wink before we shoot you. <laughs> hey, you. Very, that's very 007. Isn't it? Yeah. So that like would that. be the British army. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Wouldn't it? He's British. Yeah, but he wasn't in the army. He was in the army, yeah. He kind of was. He's no. a double knot spy. Yeah. But, uh, Jethro but, Bodine's hero. You know, when I wanted to, when I decided to join the army, I yeah. decided I would be a spy. That's really? what my job would be. And I imagined myself for some reason escaping from Eastern Europe, which didn't exist at the time, but it was what was in my head okay. with the martini and the girl in the car. And this is, <laughs> this is how I will serve my country. I will be a spy. And I looked you it up. You saw stripes too many times, right? There's no spy. <laughs> MOS in the <laughs> army. And the closest I could find is something that said military intelligence. And it just showed a guy sitting at a desk. I was like, eh, yeah. maybe not. Maybe not. That is an accurate portrayal of military intelligence, though. It is. Sitting at a desk. I have many friends that are. It's truth in advertising. Military intelligence. And there's a lot of paperwork. <sighs> a lot of desk work. It is. But you know what? It takes a lot of paperwork to get it, an army it going. Does. I mean, it does. Imagine. Everybody out there who's in the army or has been in the army, mm -hmm. if all of a sudden the paperwork stopped, I mean, you wouldn't get paid. You couldn't go on leave. I mean, just it, we couldn't function. Paperwork's important. The paperwork is now in quotation marks because everything's digital. All right, digital work. Well, it's still paper, though. Yeah. They keep saying we're going to be paperless, and then we still use all the paper. I prefer paper to digital. I do too, actually, because I it, I need something substantial to remind me, like in front of me, what like what I need to do mentally. Yeah, I, I won't I, remember I, it just as the whole easily. Tactile thing, you know what I mean? Yes. Save a tree. That's true. That's the tree. I'd rather buy a book. I get that, but that's the tree. When it comes to yes, you know, if it's a PDF, who cares? But I mean, even like our orders, when we come down on orders, it's all digital. Yeah. It's digitally printed. It's digitally signed. Yep. But then you still got to hand somebody a hard copy of the order. Yeah. I need 50 copies of this to go hand to everybody in their name. Or look, I'm supposed to be here. Look, look. No, it says so. Yeah. It'd be nice if you could just flash your phone and say, here it is. You know, and then when you it's leave, my you got to do the same thing. No, I'm supposed to be leaving. Look, it says I'm leaving. Come mm -hmm. on. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah. <sighs> We're just not there yet. No, someday. Someday we'll have a thing. They just they'll just scan our brains. Yeah, you have a little that would be chip. nice little microchip in your yeah, forehead. Have, have that reminder. Don't worry, our Google overlords will take we'll, care of that. We'll be able to push it, and it'll go first team. <laughs> oh, <laughs> first team. Love the legend. <laughs> <laughs> Rock of the Marn. Gary Owen. <laughs> uh, so we got we have uh, we have the command sergeant major coming up. And I anticipate this is going to be an interview that you absolutely want to hear. So, fast forward through these uh, next PSAs, and uh, let's get into it. Don't go away. We're going to be right the back. Here he is, Jeff Snarkworthy. If, thank you, yeah. If you've got a sudden, unexpected fever, you might have coronavirus. <laughs> If you've traveled from or through a state where coronavirus is prevalent, you might have coronavirus. <laughs> if that fever of yours, if it's accompanied by a feeling of shortness of breath or, or difficulty breathing, you might have coronavirus. <laughs> Coronavirus is steadily spreading across not only the United States, but the world. Being aware of the signs and symptoms of coronavirus helps keep us all safe. If you suspect that you may have been infected with the virus, call 254-553-6612. That's the Fort Hood Health Hotline, 254-553-6612. If you've been around some place where people were infected, if you got that fever, shortness of breath, and a cough, you might have coronavirus. 
coronavirus. It's no laughing matter. Hello? Fort Hood's great big podcast. 50% of the time, they're right. 50% of the time. And we are back. Mm -hmm. And we have a special guest. Yes, we do. We have Command Sergeant Major Cliff Burgoyne. Yay. He is the Senior Enlisted Advisor... No, I'm the sergeant major. He's the command sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> a senior enlisted advisor is in the joint world. Oh, there we oh. go. Yeah, I, this is not joint. You're not split up. We're not nope. joint. We are no joints one. here. No, nope. <laughs> no. Nope. Unity no, we've tested. We've been tested. <laughs> I was tested recently. Were you? Congratulations! Well, Did you, you pass? I I'm, I I know I will, but they don't right. ever tell you unless you fail it. That's true. <laughs> yeah. They ought to yeah. have a congratulations you pass. I feel so. like I should. No they should give us like a donut news, though, every right? time. This yes. Is, we present you this uh, certificate oh. for passing uh, 15 drug tests in a row. Yes. Congratulations. I do have to take this call, though. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Step away. We're going to do. This is, this is live, folks. This is what live <laughs> live podcasting looks like. So, Sergeant Major, you got here not too long ago. Tell me about, uh, is this coming back to Fort Hood for you? Yeah, it, it is. Um, so, I was a soldier here from uh, 1992 to 1995, and uh, this was where I cut my teeth. I was uh, in 2nd Armored Division. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, that's dating yourself, right? It, it is. <laughs> uh, not many people know about 2nd Armored Division. 2nd Armored Division, obviously, was under... Commanded for, uh, by General Patton, right? Uh, and he wore his patch over his heart, and so that's where we wore the patch, right? And uh, boy, did it look goofy when I PCS. <laughs> so that was Hell on Wheels or Old Ironsides? No, Old Ironside is old. is uh, First Armored Division. Okay, so that's Hell on Wheels. Yeah, that's at Fort Bliss. We okay. are Hell. We were Hell, hell on, on Wheels, wheels. and and we re- we really were. Wow, Hell on Wheels. Wow. So coming back. And there's lots going on. You're in the middle of a pandemic and there's a, there's a leadership change, not just you, uh, that followed on the heels of your arrival. And you guys are working a major program, kind of a reset of what leadership means here at Fort Hood. So I guess in your own words, why don't you uh, tell me about Phantom Action and what that means from your foxhole? Well, well, phantom action uh, is just that. It's action. Mm -hmm. So we as soldiers, we as leaders, uh, we need to learn to take action. Uh, When we see something wrong, when we see something right. And so uh, it's NCOs, officers uh, getting involved uh, in things that go right, things that go wrong. And that's what we're going to do. If you look back at the transition... uh, of the army from Vietnam to, to the eighties, you joined the seventies or eighties, late seventies, yeah, late seventies. Yeah. He, by the way, this is a podcast, but he does look like he was in the army in the seventies, <laughs> <laughs> but thanks. Yeah. But anyway, um, you know, we, we transitioned. And so I joined an army that had a hundred percent, uh, American trust, sure, hundred percent. And so I've been a benefactor of that. Mm-hmm. And so we're, we're, we're at a point now to where if, if we don't get our act together, uh, and I think we will, we, we could possibly lose that American trust. And at no time do, do I want to say that, hey, I handed off an army uh, that lost the American trust. And, and that's serious, right? Sure. Uh, and, but from, from a leader standpoint, um, you know, I talk about uh, 20 years of war. Vietnam lasted seven. Right. Now mm-hmm. we're at 20. And so there, there's some ramifications to that. Uh, of being so busy for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, And what I call the white 747 army. All right. So you're at a fob. Mm -hmm. uh, And at nighttime, this big, huge white 747 lands. Mm -hmm. And it's filled with water, chow, bullets, MWR equipment, Mm -hmm. mail, everything. Mm -hmm. Still while they're sleeping or we're sleeping, contractors go out and they unload the bird. And they push everything to its proper location. Mm-hmm. 
You don't have to worry about where your water bottles are because when you wake up in the morning, there's a huge pallet of water bottles right by your chew or right where your tent is. Sure. And so we didn't have to do much for ourselves. The only thing we had to do is fight the enemy, which right. rightfully so, right? Because that's mm-hmm. what you want to do. Sure. But but it trained us. Uh, our instincts now are not have to think very much. And so we've got to get to a point now to where we have to start thinking for ourselves because we don't have contractors cutting our grass. We don't have contractors picking up our trash, right? And right. so we got to start at the beginning. Right. Uh, and so we, we've got to go, go over again to where uh, we get – instilled to where it's daily business to where this is what we're doing um our master gunners right and so think about our master gunners down uh battalion avenue up and down there uh they have a tough job and and they they are built to where they instinctively think about things about the the m1 tank or the bradley mm-hmm. uh, and it goes through their mind we want a soldier to do the same thing when they wake up they look at themselves and as they're driving, they pay attention to detail, uh, and then they pay attention to detail all day long. Sure. Uh, and so we've got to get to where we're, we're thinking all to all times. So, Sergeant Major, it's interesting that you bring that up. So I'm going to ask the question, having just heard what you had to say, and that is, would you say comparatively, because I was, I was in the Army, I came in in the, the early 2000s, um, ha- is today's soldier lax? Define lacks. Are they lacking in the discipline that previous generations of soldiers had? They're not lacking in it. Uh, what it is is we're not enforcing it as, as uh, NCOs. Um, the, the discipline's there. The, the intelligence is there, without a doubt. Uh, I, I will tell you that the kids these days, uh, I say kids, uh, they're 30 years younger than me. <laughs> sure. <It's> probably... <laughs> safe to say and then their parents are younger than me but uh they're smarter than we were uh without a doubt uh specialist duo over there you're 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 pretty darn smart um (laughs) i am a little smart (laughs) but but i will say honestly speaking uh you're more mentally tough You're, you're more resilient because there was never uh an a chance that you were gonna fail at anything you were not going to let that happen. But nowadays, it's it's not failing. It's it's letting others win. Or, uh, you know, we you've heard it several times, getting a trophy. Mm-hmm. Everybody yeah, gets yeah. a trophy. Hey, right. somebody's going to finish last. And my favorite uh, movie to watch is, is Talladega Nights uh, <laughs> and, and, and Ricky Bobby. Sure. And it's if you're not first, you're last, which right. is true. Mm-hmm. And so, but the thing is, if you're last one time, it doesn't mean you quit. It means you got to work harder, mm-hmm. right? Uh, because that's the American value. If you growing up, your parents, uh, my parents, you, hey, if you want something, what do you do? Specialists do. What do you do? If if you, you want work something, for it. you work hard. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. It's it's been difficult for me because, like I said, I served previously, and then I got out and I came back as a civilian. And uh, as the social media manager for here at Fort Hood, I have for all the stuff that, that Fort Hood as an institution has been through on social media in the year 2020, I've been in that mix and uh, seeing all the stuff people have had to say about our soldiers and about Fort Hood and about the Army. It really gets under my skin. I mean, it really, there are times when I'm sitting there at the keyboard and I have to remind myself, I represent something greater than myself. I cannot <laughs> respond to these people. <laughs> well, well, here's what I'd say to that. And, and, and I know exactly how you feel because I've done that myself where I'd read a post knowing that it's not fact. Mm-hmm. And so that's the toughest part. Uh, and so when, when people post, we take it as, as fact, but, but that's not the case. It's opinion. And so we as soldiers... We need to do some research before we, you know, we have to think and post. We don't mm-hmm. post and then think. Uh, I don't know. What do you think specialists do? Um, I always think about what I'm, what I'm posting, how it will reflect on me, especially now with cancel culture. I think that's a trend that's going to go away. I hope but, so. <laughs> yeah. Knock on wood. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, it's like, 
something you said 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when the entire world was different back then. And you look at it now and it's almost like, I feel bad because I, it seems like people are having to apologize over and over and over for the same thing that happened in a completely different structure that doesn't make sense to today because we've, we've changed. Sure. Um, but I do think about that. I'm just like, oh, we, in 10 years, will this look bad? And I don't do that with everything, but sometimes I do when, when I do post. But yeah, just the whole social media is such a big deal now, especially for my generation. Like it's so ingrained into the real world that it is hard. Like if you don't take a break, it can really affect your mental health. And I think for today's soldiers, I think, I think they're just bombarded all the time. Like you have access to the most information you've ever had in the world and I just feel like their minds aren't able to take all of that in like constantly and if they don't take a break from it it, it, yeah it it really can weigh on you and it can really affect you so it's just you have to have a healthy balance and I'm sure it's tough because I mean it's it's just that it's information Mm -hmm. uh but but it's not uh fact right Mm -hmm. it's opinion it's opinion nine times out of ten Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, my kids, uh, you know, I get tired of listening to my kids. They give me their opinion all the time. I'm like, all right, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> and they know everything, right? That's right. <laughs> well, now, and now, you know, when I was in, of course, you know, the Army wasn't perfect. No. And no, uh, stuff got under your skin, and you had mm-hmm. to blow off steam, and you, you know, rah, 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 to your friends, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, in between formations and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and now it seems like everybody takes those feelings, and instead of keeping it, in your group and going to your friend, they just throw it online for everybody. I'm not happy with you. So I'm going to go, I'm going to tell the world about it. I, I feel, and this is just my personal feelings, but there's a, a little bit of a disconnect uh, between people now that they don't understand that if you're a member of the armed services or even a government employee, Sure. When you speak on the internet, you are not just speaking for yourself. You're representing something greater than yourself. And people around the world will take a look at what you posted and make a judgment based not just the army, but the country. They'll they're judging based on what you're saying. And that wasn't your intention at all. You were blowing off steam. Sure. Um and so I I would like to see people turn away from that or at least consider that and that but that sign up brings me into army values yeah exactly i know we wanted to talk about today and there's a lot of people out there that would say well fort hood you're you're lacking in army values what is wrong with you fort hood you have no values there but we do Mm -hmm. we really do i mean the institution i mean uh, leadership the acronym Seven seven army values that that are out there that we're supposed to be living by, mm-hmm. and we're trained to us from you know private on up. Oh yeah, um, ingrained. Um, so our major is that happening now? Are we are are we are we educating? Is because we were on a war footing? Maybe we were not educating. Our forces. The way no, I, I I think the army values are there, hands down. Matter of fact, I don't think I know mm-hmm. our army values are there, and so uh, to say that they're not, uh, I, I think that's probably not the way to go. Okay. Um, what a couple things I would say though is one is we we can't uh, we can't post on emotions because mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you when I get emotions, I lose. Every time I speak to my wife, every single <laughs> time, right? Every time. That's a lose-lose. But let, let's go back to what you were talking about, uh, okay. the difference when you came in to now. Sure. Right? And so the difference uh, between now and, and then when you came in is, you know, we trained during the day, and then in the evenings, we had intramural sports. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. So intramural sports was a way for us as a squad, as a platoon, as a company, troop, battery, to go out, play a sport together. Right. Uh, you, there's some emotions tied to that, right? And you get mm-hmm. some arguments mm-hmm. and things, and it's okay. 
it's okay out there on a sporting event to get mad at somebody or somebody slid into you at second base and you got mad or somebody uh, clipped you right. on the football field or gave you an elbow on a basketball court and, and you dealt with it. Uh, mm-hmm. You got your emotions out, mm-hmm. but you're doing a physical event, which which kind of tears you down a little bit, Where, but it builds you back up when you're done. And so I, I think uh, from sports, uh, we, we've taken that out because there's not a lot of – in mural sports going on right mm-hmm. um back when you were uh in the army i think mm-hmm. what uh was that the civil war <laughs> 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 yeah, christ was a corporal yeah, yeah oh my it. gosh but but no um so we, we we've got we need things uh to to help us teach our younger generation how to deal with those emotions and not do it on social media because if if we're learning how to you know participate in sports and be a member of a team uh we we learn a little bit about ourselves Mm -hmm. uh how tough we are and you know how to get along with others how are you going to bring back teamwork part of phantom action you know the the i know we're talking cohesive teams the the deputy commanding general was talking about that when he uh, did the initial press conference how do you rebuild the teams in in at fort hood it's a five-letter word Trust. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, specialist do has to be able to trust her leaders, right? Right. Um, you've got to be able to trust your leaders. Yeah. I've got to be able to trust my leaders. Mm-hmm. And so to build that trust, you know, we talk about care of families, knowing your soldiers, um, caring for your soldier uh, is not daycare. Mm-hmm. It's not kindergarten. Caring for your soldiers is knowing what's what's right for the soldiers. Sure. Um, and to know what's right for your soldiers, you really have to know who they are. Um, and, and I'll give you one example. So when I was a junior in high school, got my driver's license in Louisiana. We actually had cars there, by the way. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, not just boats. We had cars. <laughs> but my parents made me come home at 11 o'clock at night, and mm-hmm. I was mad. I was frustrated. I was like, well, all the cool kids are staying out past, you know, 11. You know, you're just mean my parents, they're <laughs> dumb. They don't know anything. Looking back now, oh, they were smart because nothing good happened after, after 11 o'clock, <laughs> exactly. especially with high school kids, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we, we've got to, one, know our soldiers. Uh, we got to take care of them. Uh, taking care of them is being hard on them at times. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some people may now use that word as toxic, uh, but – that's not the case. Uh, what I would tell you is that we, we've got to be tough on our soldiers because our soldiers really, they, they joined to, to get some discipline. They joined to get structure. And so the chief of staff and the Sergeant Major of the Army has told us, hey, we're, we're going to give you back some structure. Mm-hmm. All right. And so starting the week of the 28th of September, we're going to take five days off. Uh, when I say five days off, we're not going to go out – uh, north into the training area, we're, we're going to work on individual skills. Individual skills means, hey, I, I need to learn to, to put my seatbelt on, all right, because we got a lot of soldiers <laughs> driving around this post without seatbelts, right? That's the easiest task we can do is get in uh, the car and put seatbelt on. Sure. Um, we're we're going to learn to pick up some trash, all right, because we don't have contractors picking them up. Right. All right. Uh, we're we're going to learn to sweep our barracks rooms. We're going to learn to take the trash out every day. Uh, we're, we're going to, uh, take care of our buddy. We're going to do things for our soldiers. Uh, we're going to do things for each other and we're going to enforce some standards. That's great. That sounds like the, uh, the army I was in. (laughs) No, it does. It does. And I I haven't seen, you mentioned it and it hadn't occurred to me, but I hadn't seen a, a lot of that stuff. I think that's good. I think, you know, especially we were talking about social media, people come into the, the army, Traditionally, they leave high school and then at a young age, they come into the army and they're used to behaving a certain way, especially online and stuff. So it takes a lifestyle change Mm -hmm. for them to stop behaving in that way. And I think the army has been very concerned for some time that the generations that they've been getting recently are maybe a little softer. Than, than the previous generations. Um, I know I, I've heard, I never experienced this. Dave's given me the eye. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, 
Brianna, you've heard about uh, basic training and them having some cards for like. Yeah, now Brianna's giving me the eye. cards. That's yeah, a, that's that was, a, that urban nineties, right? Urban legend. It was that uh, an urban, that, urban that's legend. That's an urban legend. Oh, thank goodness. That was stress Air, cards. Air Force. Yeah, really. Yeah. Was it? It sounds like an Air stress Force thing. Card. Stress here. card. Yeah. yeah. It's an yeah. urban. Oh, urban was legend. that the thing where you you hold it up if you can't take yeah, yeah, yeah. With the drill sergeant? Okay, I did hear about that. I haven't yeah. heard that in so long. See, and you were giving me the eye. Well, I didn't even know. I, I it took me forever to like. Did they do that? They didn't do that. No, that oh, okay, it's okay, an urban okay, legend. Yeah. It's not, so here we are debunking <laughs> urban legends for you here on the podcast. But uh, what I'm saying is um, the people are different. They've been coddled a bit, I think, growing up. And you were saying everybody gets a trophy. And so coming into a military lifestyle is a serious gear shift. And I know when I joined, I mean, the, everybody was betting against me. This guy's never going to fit into the army or anything, but I loved it. I loved the structure of it. I loved the fact that I could trust my leadership and that gave me stability. And that was my experience here at Fort Hood. It was very, very positive. Uh, and I went from Fort Hood as a duty station to my next duty station where I did not have the same stability and trust in the leadership. He worked for the Air Force. I did. It was the Air Force. (laughs) And it was miserable. It was absolutely miserable. So when you talk about bringing things back in that I remember from when I was in, that really fills me with hope. Because I think that's a great thing. It it is a good thing. Uh, And and something that we must do. Not not that we can do. We must do this. We, We must... Uh, gain the trust of the soldier. So that means holding the leaders accountable uh, for, for the daily lives of our, of our soldiers uh, because we owe it, one, to the American public to take a, a civilian, put them into basic training. Oh, by the way, it's, you know, it's only 14, 15 weeks with AIT pushed into it, and if you're infantry, it's 22 weeks. Right. Mm-hmm. We're, we're expecting basic training to solve our problems. They're not. They're just... The, the very beginning. And so I look back on my career. It took me from 92 to 95 to really buy into a profession. Sure. Right? When my, my first term in the Army, I was just a soldier. It was just a, a job, right? What, what am I going to do next with my life? Right. right? And, and that's where I was. And it took me three years to buy into the profession. And it takes it, you know, some people it takes. I had a break in service and went to college and came back in and found out I missed it. Yeah. But yeah, first, first enlistment, first four years, I was gone. I I, I left and I went, went to school Mm -hmm. Um, because those were my college years. I joined right out of high school Mm -hmm. Yeah. and at 22, I was starting college and didn't quite fit in. I was doing the reserve gig while I was there and, and. Uh, my particular university were very left. They didn't like my haircut because I was in the reserves and had to have. What no, school did you go to? Uh, university of Wisconsin. Where's that at? Oh, uh, I think it's in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, and this was this was early '80s, and you know the arm. We were not in any major wars or anything like that. But uh, I miss the army. And uh, as soon as the army said, uh, I remember I was in, going into my uh, senior senior year and walked into the recruiter's office and said, "If you can make me a journalist and put me in Europe, I'll sign the dotted line. They take the ASVAB, but you qualify. Okay, whatever." And three weeks later, I was gone. Whoa. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's awesome. I said the same thing, and (laughs) and they sent me to Texas. (laughs) You can give me Europe, make me a journalist, I will join tomorrow. And the guy went, "Uh, you have to retake your ASVAB. The the funny thing about ASVAB, I scored really well as a high school uh, senior. (laughs) I had, after three years of college, you did I worse? scored three points less. Oh uh, so my god! Just tell you what I was doing while I was in college, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah, not so good. I yeah, think education good is good. Though. No <laughs> one can ever take your education from you, so yeah. I think that's still a good thing. Well, but yeah, at uh, first enlistment, and and the, I have had a lot of great soldiers work for me when I was in that they did their one tour and they got out and they were great Americans, especially during wartime. And that's okay, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, this isn't. You know, I did 20, 20, almost 27 years. That's not for everybody. 
Well, it's not just, it's not that it, it, it takes a while to reflect on, on yep. what you've done. And yep. so what we fail to do a lot of times is, is reflect on our experience. And so three years is not very long. Sure. I mean, for an 18 year old coming to the army, Oh, three years is another, almost three years of high school. Right. You know? mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. But you know, as you get and start trying to learn how to adult a little bit, uh, it takes some time sure. uh, to buy in. And so buying into the profession of the army is tough. Right? Sure. The army's not easy. Got to drink uh, the Kool-Aid. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Um, you have to sip it. That's <laughs> oh, my... We, we yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, can't, you can't drink it. You have to... With one pinky Yes, yeah, so with right? one pinky up. Well, mm-hmm. uh, you, I, I don't believe that. You can't sip it. You got to guzzle it. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to guzzle it. Uh, but it, it's, it, it takes a while to buy into this profession because mm-hmm. it... it but, but I tell you, the, the rewards at the end are, are amazing. Um, what I tell you from my perspective, the, the army's done well for me and my family. Sure. Uh, not because I'm a SAR major is because, uh, kind of what we put into it. Um, what I would tell you for the Burgoyne family is, is that, you know, there's three personas, right? You've got your home persona, your work persona, and then mm-hmm. an unknown persona. And the unknown persona is something that are cloud thoughts, right? I mean, sure. you, you don't have a lot of thoughts and a lot of clouds. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Other Others do. Right. <laughs> But if, you're, if your home and your work persona are separated and you're two different people, mm-hmm. the unknown persona a lot of times sneaks in and it becomes reality, right? Those are our cloud thoughts, mm-hmm. stuff that, that it's in our head and we're not telling anybody else. Right. But then it, it comes to reality, either home or work, and that's where bad things happen. But, it, but if you're the same person at home and work, mm-hmm. those two personas are together and the unknown persona never becomes reality. And that's sure. kind of the way I see life. And the Burgoyne, mm. the Burgoyne family uh, has has bought into the army from the very beginning. My wife uh, and, and I'll tell you a story. Um, I was uh, I was in Ranger School. It's my second enlistment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in Ranger School and, and I had failed uh, knots. You got to tie knots in Ranger School. It's this mountain phase of Ranger School. Right. And I called her up because I was getting recycled. That means you got to start over. I called her up and, and she's in Alaska and I call her up and I said, Hey, hon, how you doing? Uh, she goes, why are you calling me? I said, well, I just failed and I'm getting recycled. She says, well, I don't want to hear from you until you graduate. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. I was like, Oh, that sent a message. (laughs) Okay. Better put your big boy pants on now. Mm -hmm. And and so, uh, really great supporting, uh, cast that I have my kids my kids love the army um my family my extended family and so it's it's a family affair it really is and that's what building teams is right yeah it, re- it really make, is make the extend the family yeah it, without a doubt it's not just the soldier right we talk about the golden triangle mm-hmm. the soldiers in the middle of the triangle mm-hmm. you've got your your leaders you've got your family and you got your friends and all combined together uh and you're in the center of the golden triangle you ever heard that there do i i think i've heard variations of it you better say yes i've heard of that that's part of of the sma's uh this is my squad oh yes well you've at least played the golden triangle in band right (laughs) no i'm not a triangle player no i would never touch that once again you should have said yes (laughs) but but you know I'm asking you, you know, from what I just said, what, how does that resonate with you? I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? I was more thinking about how you were, how you were explaining your work life and your home life. I never had never thought of it that way because I feel like, I feel like I'm very similar, but I, I, I have a more playful, like relaxing side. And then my work side is more serious. Um, but in terms of, the leadership and your friends and your family. I think I really do feel like, I mean, all of that is such a plays such a big part in your overall well-being and your ability to like come into work and be earnest and to enjoy what you're doing. I yeah. think is pretty accurate. Yeah. I'm still being groomed as a human being, believe it or not. I mean, my wife, it lets me know that. Every <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, I feel like it's, you're always working on yourself. Like, Five years ago, I feel like we all hated who we were five years ago, and then the five years before that. So I feel like it's we are always just like learning and growing, and like you're you're still content in the present, but then you want to strive just a little bit higher. Yeah, what I heard you say was you have high goals. 
I do have high goals. Yes. <laughs> and set high expectations on yourself. And I think I that's a, that's a big part of life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, high standards, I think are everything. Yeah. It's important for us, no matter what you do, that you're always reaching for something. I had, uh, I had a mentor once who gave me some absolutely great advice. Um, and he said to me, uh, when you think you're at the top of your game, when you're the best, you've learned everything there is, and, and no one can touch you, yeah. it's time for you to quit because you're not as good as you thought you were. You always can learn more. You always can do better. Yep. Yeah. And I've, I've tried to remember that through life because sometimes it's tough being the best and I have to find new goals. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Strive for perfection, Charlie. <laughs> One of, one of the things, one of the characteristics we talk about is being humble, which you're not. <laughs> but, you know, I, I gauge it uh, and I tell myself, uh, I gauge it on the PT score, 180 to 300. And so, you know, when I do something, I ask myself, hey, did I just do a 180 or am I striving for a 300? And so, you know, my wife will always look at me like, yeah, that was probably a 182. <laughs> <laughs> So you got the little code words at home too, right? <laughs> That's oh, right. Man. That's right. Yeah, they really are indoctrinated, huh? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I always I think of the circle. So it's similar. The 360 and then right. the 180. Right. Mm-hmm. Well the 180 is part of the circle. It goes to 360. Yes. But the, the PT score is at 300 though. Well, I mean, this is the extended scale, but the the way that the points will stop at the 300. Yeah, I'll always, when, when I'm talking to a soldier and, and going to correct them, uh-huh. I always use the PT test, right? And I said, your boots are like 170 right now. <laughs> 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 and and I, I think soldiers get that. You mm-hmm. know, instead of yelling at them, oh, your boots look like crap, blah, 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 blah. Hey, that's 170. How right. do you feel about that? Right. God, boots. When I came in, we had oh, to shine wow. our shine boots. Our boots. <laughs> Well, I, I when, didn't miss that the last few years. That's like saying, you know, my daughter said that. Uh, I, I said something to my daughter. I said, we need to get back to this. And uh, she said, Dad, they left the musket a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get back to muskets. I'll tell you, the the minute they authorized the, the desert boots at the 1st Cavalry Division, and we weren't even to the new ACU uniform yet. Right. The minute the sergeant major authorized that, I had a pair. <laughs> no more shining boots for me. I am done. Free How excited blast. were you? <laughs> oh, it was a game changer. Uh, Suddenly I had nothing to do with my Sunday evenings, which was, you know, spread out stuff with a lighter and and the shoe polish. And But oh looking gosh. back, though, now you're like, oh, maybe that was a good thing. It's kind of like coming in at 11 o'clock at night for curfew. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you had entire businesses go out of business when we went Velcro and we went with this and that. and We're not shining shoes anymore and we're not sewing things on and we're not pressing uniforms. They're not pressing uniforms? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah. see that. They, yeah. They press They're it pressing. against the, uh, the wall locker. Right. <laughs> right. No, I, I remember my time at Bragg and uh, the... Uh, the wife, uh, our first home together was an apartment in Fayetteville, and uh, edge dressing is hard to get out of carpet. Oh, no. I found that out the oh. hard way. <laughs> For those who don't know uh, and listening, edge dressing is stuff you don't <laughs> spill on the carpet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like a gallon of or, paint. Or put too much on your boots so that you track it all the way through the house. Ooh. Yeah, yeah not so good. No. But it looks, makes your boots look great. I'm sure. But uh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, that's called a rookie mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what can you say? We all did them, right? <laughs> yeah. But um, going back to your point about Phantom Action Week, yeah. um, we're, we're, we're going to give leaders uh, the time to, to go back and, and, uh, and I'm going to use the word, but it's not re-blue, right? Reset. Mm-hmm. Uh, just just kind of put things in perspective and – visualize where we are and and knowing that we, we've got to have a stronger foundation, a stronger base. Um, if you look at the, you know, Hard Rock Cafe in New Orleans, it just kind of crumbled, right, because it didn't have a strong base. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and we're going to build our foundation here at Fort Hood because this is a great place. Um, and, you know, I, I owe it to the soldiers uh, to give my best effort, to give my 300 
on the PT test, uh, my effort every day. And so that, that's kind of what I'll do. Uh, you'll, they'll see me out there. I think some of the soldiers already see me out there a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> they're like, God, there's that little short guy again. Actually, <laughs> actually for the listeners, I'm about six foot tall. So you see me walking <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sergeant Major, I want to thank you for, for coming onto the show with us. It's been fantastic having you on. We hope you'll come back again someday. Sir, absolutely. Um, you know, anytime I can do this to get uh, the message out to the soldiers, and if the soldiers have, you know, something they want to, to send in, and, and I'll answer their questions, oh, there you uh, go. do what I can. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Uh, get some feedback, and because uh, I'm not getting any from y'all. Y'all are just looking at me like, oh, I'm doing such a great job. Uh, well, you are. <laughs> uh, you are. And, you know, You're it's, connecting. this is a great platform for you because we are the Army's number one podcast. Yeah, we are. We are. Absolutely. Really? Better, yeah. better than the chief in the SMA? Just say yes, because yes. winning oh. matters. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. 300. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 300. 301. 360, 420. 420. <laughs> the, uh, well, this has been fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we will have more exciting things to talk about. Not Probably not as good as this. I'm going to uh, be honest with top you. Yeah. It's going to be hard topping this. But we'll have <laughs> topical things uh, right after this. What does resiliency mean to you? For the folks at Fort Hood Resiliency Campus... Resiliency is helping folks help themselves. The campus offers a wide range of programs, each aimed at assisting Fort Hood units and individuals in need of morale and team building opportunities. Through programs like the Applied Fitness Center, Military Life Counselors, the Army Wellness Center, Nutrition Clinic, and the Warrior Quest Adventure Program, the Resiliency Campus headquarters is located on the fifth floor of the Shoemaker Center on Darnall Loop. To find out more about what the Fort Hood Resiliency Campus can offer you, look them up on Facebook or give them a call at 254-285-5693. Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. Close enough for the government, good enough for you. Coming on strong on a Monday. I feel so low. It's okay. You can laugh. Oh, okay. I don't know if I was supposed to be here or not. You're yeah. here? Where you're, did you, you go you, during well, the interview? You, you were just, actually here. Yeah, but you just said you, you, we're going to talk about baseball. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. We're going to talk baseball. You get out. That's, well, yeah. <laughs> you get out, Brianna. Yeah, you you we're talking oh, okay. baseball. I'm here. I'm present. All right. All right. You're still a Cincinnati Reds fan? Well. Sort of. I, You know, they've, they've done some stuff to cheese me off this year. You have said that they right. are terrible. Now... I haven't just said it. They've demonstrated. No. <laughs> All right. There's like a week left in the season as this thing airs, right? Mm-hmm. But right now, did you know the Cincinnati Reds are like a half a game out of reaching the playoffs? <laughs> they might as well be 90 games out from As the are my Milwaukee Brewers, and they're playing each other right now. Right now? Who's ahead? Uh, well, the game isn't until... 540 this evening. Oh. But both of them have just as many wins as losses. Wow. And basically because it's head to head, mm-hmm. whoever wins that three game series has the leg up on getting into the playoffs. It's gonna be the Brewers. Yeah. I say that as really a Reds have been. Yeah. I say that as a Reds. But fan. I have to tell you, Charlie, you do have a chance. Well to watch like I said, they've postseason really baseball. Cheese me off this year, so I'm not following them as heavy. I don't know. This year, um, you know what would help? It's fall. There will be a World Series. Well, in Texas, yeah. You know what would help? What if they let Pete Rose back in baseball? Yeah, they could let him DH, right? He needs. Well, <laughs> oh gosh, if they let him play, that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. Let him hit once. Did you ever hear of a guy named Minnie Minosa? Yeah, sure. Minoso. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> His thing was, right, and he's not in the Hall of Fame or anything like that, but he actually pinch hit in his 40s with the White Sox. Mm-hmm. In his, he was a coach with the White Sox for a lot of years. In his 50s, they brought him up, activated him, let him pinch hit in his 50s, and I think they did it when he was 60. That's cool. Let him pinch hit. So the guy basically played in six decades. That's cool. Pete, Pete would just okay. get, would get on. Pete's pushing 80 now, isn't Pete, he? No, not quite. But he'd get on base. You know why? It's that stomach that just... 
<laughs> bean them in the stomach just and they just kind of kind of roll that them, way, Pete. That way, roll them down to first, like uh, what's her face from Willy Wonka. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's like oh, the, Violet. No, Violet, yeah, I was Violet. gonna say Veruca, like, but she was the other one. Yeah. George Brett. You know, growing up in Kansas, George Brett was, oh, he was the hero to many. And uh, the Royals game that I went to, not only did he not get a hit at that game, but he got walked, and I think he sprained something running to first. And he was out of the game, and I'm like, this is the guy that everybody's like, <laughs> Bring something running to first base. I remember jogging. George Brett, Hall of Famer. <laughs> yeah. Great third baseman. Got it. But there's two things that I remember George Brett not being a Kansas City fan. Mm-hmm. One was the tar. Oh, the pine tar the, incident. The pine tar incident where he gets thrown out of a game. Hit yeah. a home run to win a game. And then they looked at the bat, and the bat had too much pine tar on it. It had way, way. It was all the way, way almost. Way it was way, on, you know, way too much pine tar. So they... Uh, disallow the home run and throw him out of the game. Mm-hmm. It's not only not a home run, it's an out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they lose the game on that final at bat. Mm-hmm. And he goes crazy and gets ejected and gets suspended and all kinds of other stuff. So there's that. And the other one was he missed a playoff game for him, right? That. No, I'm, I'm feeling it. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling that. He has the kinship. <laughs> I'm feeling that. The, uh, did you hear about what happened to the Twins game the other day, talking about disallowing a Home run. No. So a fella went 2-0, and all mm-hmm. right? Up to bat, two balls, no strikes. Okay. The third pitch, the uh, umpire calls it a strike. Okay. The batter thinks it should be a ball, and an argument ensues. Uh-huh. It is unresolved, but the game continues. So okay. in the next pitch, the player hits a home run. Okay. Trots around the bases, starts going down to the dugout, but then turns around and reapproaches home plate, to which the umpire then throws him out of the game. Wait, what? Okay. But that's after he crossed after, the plate. But it's like you just hit a home run, and now the umpire throws you out of the game right after you hit a home run. But the run still counts. The run still counts. Okay. And then he, like, covered all the, the home plate with dirt. Oh, that, yeah. That'll show him. Of course. <laughs> of course. Now home plate's dirty. What are you going to do about it? No. Umpire. Now you got to bend down and sweep it up again because they do that. <laughs> that yes, important, they do. They serve that important function in baseball of sweeping home plate. Just in case people forgot where it was. Yeah, you can clearly see that home plate. But is hey, here. sports are underway. College they are. football, NFL, NHL. Oh, they're all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's send them all the catch sports up. converging. And it's all yeah. COVID and bubble and all that stuff, and just kind of weird. But NBA yeah. is still playing. Mm-hmm. Does it feel like it's getting like the sports are getting normal or no? No. The I co- will say the, when the, I see the cutouts, it's very unnerving. You know what? The, I mean, the Cowboys played in Jerry's world over this past weekend, mm-hmm. and they won their home opener, mm-hmm. um, 40 to 39, comeback victory. Wow. Anyway, think of Jerry's world and how big it is. You've been there, and you won't go because you you know got ripped off. Their prices are too expensive. They had 20,000 people in Jerry's world. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of hot dogs. Twenty thousand. Wow. The place sits like seats like a hundred thousand. That is crazy. So, I mean, they probably have more people in there for a uh, Texas State football championship with the high school. Mm. That's amazing. So you can fit twenty thousand people in a football stadium. That's okay. Mm-hmm. But God bless you. Don't you line up to vote because that's too dangerous. <laughs> what? They're saying about this whole mail in yeah. voting. Everybody's like, oh, you gotta mail it in this year. You gotta mail it in. Well, let's see, you'll go to the you go to the supermarket. That's not a problem. You'll go to you'll go to your big box stores to go shopping. I thought we we're voting here in Texas. Oh, we well, it's an option. It's an option to mail it. It's not, it's being strongly being pushed on people though. Okay. It's too dangerous. You must vote by mail. If you go to a football game, you can go vote. Bottom line is it doesn't matter how you do it. You should do it Absolutely. one way or the other. You should vote. But there is something. Early voting starts like mid-October. I am not a fan of early voting. Why? Come on. Because it's like saying, to use a sports metaphor, we're going to start the football game at 6, but 
just to give people, get them into it, we're going to start it two weeks early. So we're going to play football a little bit for these two weeks, and then it really starts on this time. Yeah. Don't think about that metaphor too much. It wasn't great. Yeah, but honestly, if you've made up your mind, Mm -hmm. go vote. I'm going to vote. I am such a proponent of voting in person. Yeah. When I was living overseas, I would fly back to America to cast my ballot. Just wow. for the presidential. Just right? for the presidential. I'd fly back here. The rest of them, they really? don't, they're a bunch of bums. They don't do anything. But Ser- the seriously. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I'd always fly back. Wow. That's, I'd always fly back. That is dedication. And it's important. Voting is important. Yep. It should be important to everyone hearing this. Unless you're in a foreign country and not an American, and then I don't care. But if you're an American, <laughs> you should vote. Brianna, why are you looking at your phone? Sorry, I'm getting messages from work. Are you? Yeah, they need me back, but not right now. Oh. But. <laughs> they need me back, but they needed me back 15 minutes ago, yeah. but yeah, I'm just having too much fun. Yeah. No, they're just wondering. Okay. Yeah. Do you have anything to say about voting? Oh, definitely vote. Register and vote. For sure. Thanks. That's yeah. great. Well, I feel like my my generation, especially for the last election, there was not a high didn't represent turnout. Mm-hmm. But there isn't usually. There is. Yes, you're correct. Usually, it's the the older, especially you are. midterms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like the young don't vote, but then as they go through life, they realize, oh my gosh, I should have been voting, and then they vote later. Yep. But then they can't convince the younger ones to vote because nope. it's a what can you convince? Same them? old cycle. I was so excited to vote the first time. You know who the first person I ever voted for was? President Lincoln. Ow! <laughs> Ow! I was. A, no. At least he didn't say he served in the Civil War. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bob Dole, who was a friend of Lincoln's. Bob Dole. Wow. I voted for Dole. Boy, was that a vote tossed into the... Yeah. Was... It happens. I think we all have at least one. I don't know what I was thinking. Bob Dole. <laughs> well, he's from Kansas. Bob Dole is from Kansas. Bob Dole. World War he used II to, do you remember Bob Dole? For... No. He spoke no of himself in the third person. Uh, people that do that are so weird. I don't don't remember that? It. Yeah, not Bob so Bob Dole's happy to be here. Oh, God. Bob Dole. Bob Dole. It's so weird. It's yeah, that drives me a little nuts. Yeah, too. I don't like when people do that. It seems very neurotic. It was fun on Saturday Night Live, though. They had a good time. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they had a few old days. They did. They always had. Did you hear that uh, John Kerry is going to be Joe Biden huh? on Saturday Night Live? Really? Yes. Oh, no way. Be funny. Yeah. Jim Carrey, not John. Jim Carrey. Carrey. I was going to go. John, oh, John Carrey. Carrey. Yeah, John Carrey's going to be an actor now. Wow. I'm surprised Carrey, he got former Secretary of State and former I thought he was like again. blacklisted or something. No, he's always been a white man. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. And with that <laughs> I think we've run its course, haven't yes, we? I think yeah, we, have. we really we ran have. it to the ground. We have. Oh my gosh, what a great show this has been, though. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. honestly. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Thing. No matter even with all of our efforts to screw it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll We're still try. standing. We're only doing it about 178. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're doing a little better than 178. 100. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, and with that, we will all see you all next week as we start October. And what a wonderful month it will be. One step closer to 2020. <laughs> like that's going to do anything. I'm excited for spooky season. Yay. All right. See you all later. Bye.